Ah. Hey, Ty here, so welcome to the Viatech channel. Here we are with the Yo VR simulator, one of the most inexpensive, if not the most inexpensive, motion simulator on the market. So let's see together how fun it is, how it works, what you should know, and uh, well, is it worth it or not? Let's get into it. All right, here we are. So let's get in here. This is a little more comfortable than the floor. So the Yo VR motion simulator is a 3 DOF, so three degrees of freedom motion simulator. What does it mean? Well, you have three major movements. The pitch that is like up and down, like this one, the roll that is these movements, so like this, and the yaw, because it's a yaw VR, right? So it's gonna be the rotation. So the pitch is gonna give you the sense of acceleration, of course, and the, the roll, the sense of the G-force that brings you around when you take a turn or something like that. Instead, the yaw is gonna give you the sensation of the loss of traction. So, uh, well, this is on the driving simulator, of course, if you're flying around, well, those are exactly pitch, roll, and yaw, uh, the movements that you're gonna have uh, on a plane. And with the simulator, of course, you get the software to control it. So uh, you can test uh, yourself all the different simulators and you can see them over here. But so how does it work? Well, there are three motors with wheels on the base that will move and spin the half dome around. The dome is connected via wireless and of course, it will need to be charged. I use a power bank, for example, but the battery life is pretty long. So, well, uh, you don't need it to charge it that often. The base is wireless as well, but you have a wire connection option that will give you a faster response. That it's vital if you ask me in motion simulators because you really need the one-to-one -one response as much as possible. Now, the internal part of the half dome is covered in a fake leather uh, to make it a little softer, of course, and inside we have uh, like a big pillow that is not the most squishy out there. Probably they wanna to keep the person uh, really in place uh, when you play it. But yeah, it's not the most comfortable thing for sure. Also over here in this version, because this is like the premium version, you also have this seat and stuff for the motion simulators that you can just put in very, very fast. Now putting it together, it's pretty easy and fast. Then setting it up, well, that's a kind of another story. I put it together in like 45 minutes, uh, but then I realized that the pieces weren't really like uh, doing what they were supposed to do for me. Uh, probably one of the biggest problems for me, at least that I'm pretty tall, I'm 6.2, I really needed to move many different stuff. For example, you see here, I put two pieces of wood to raise up the uh, steering wheel, because if not, I didn't have enough space for my legs uh, with a regular version. Again, this might be a problem that you don't have if you are shorter, uh, but yeah, uh, this is a problem for tall uh, people like me. And also most of the pieces and plates don't come with the needed holes to like put the different kind of brands and stuff for steering wheel or OTAS and stuff like that. So you really need a drill for sure and try to don't get the Ikea one like I did because that's an awful drill and maybe a hammer will be handy as well. At least I used it. Now, I really wanted motion simulators pretty much ready for everything. That's why I mounted the steering wheel and the Otis at the same time. So when I want to switch game and stuff, I don't have to work on it again, but I just like get in, uh, put my headsets on and start to play. But unfortunately, it's not that easy because you really have to have in mind uh, the weight balance and everything. So this is a, a little of work that you have to do to make it work in the right way, software-wise and hardware-wise. Otherwise, I talked about the reason the steering wheel, for example, but that wasn't enough because uh, for the pedals, for example, they really changed the uh, weight balance so much that every time that I was at the breaking point, the first time in the track, well, uh, the your VR was struggling to go back to the regular position. So I get to put the counterweights on the back that, as you can see, uh, it's kind of like, a, you know, like homemade. And I don't really suggest to make it in the way I did because, well, I mean, water there is not a great idea, but I'm still working on a better solution. But in that way, with a counterweight that here is around five kilos, so around like 11, 12 pounds, I was able to actually play every game without any problem. But at the same time, it's not really suggested uh, because it could eat up too much the motors. But well, luckily YoVR is an amazing Discord community that's gonna help you in pretty much everything. And you're gonna see also at all the other people what they did to make it work. I found this the best solution for me, for my 
two hours, three hour playing sessions, uh, I'm not having any problem. Well, of course, your mileage may vary. If you are shorter than me, well, you're not gonna have the same problem. You're not gonna need the same counterweight. If you're not using steering wheel and just co test and stuff, you're not gonna have that problem at all. Because yes, the biggest thing is to keep the balance off for the lever principle. If you have something heavy very far from the center, well, it's gonna be even heavier to move around. So yeah, you're gonna need a bigger counterweight over there. And I also use for the counterweight the bracket for the steering wheel because mine broke day one. Uh, luckily, I was able to test the customer service and well, they sent a new one uh, right away. So yeah, I used it for that. So well, and we ready to play? Well, there is a, another step that you have to take in account and is a motion cancellation or motion compensation. Uh, what is it? Well, uh, when this is gonna move around, of course, the virtual reality headset that is tracking with the lighthouses or with uh, your room around is not gonna understand that you are on a motion platform. So when you move with this, you're gonna move inside your car or inside your cockpit and stuff, and it's gonna feel very, very weird. So you need something to actually cancel that motion and make like the, the word moving together with the UVR. To do that, you're gonna need an additional software that is not integrated in the software directly from UVR, then makes things a little more complicated. I use, for example, uh, with the lighthouses for with the Valve Index, a Vive Tracker over here in the back that you can use uh, with SteamVR input to, like, of course, give uh, the motion cancellation. There are many videos explaining it much, much better than what I'm doing right now. But yeah, uh, you need a lot of work to make it happen and to be playable because well if you don't do that well you're gonna get sick very very fast but well now with all the boring stuff said uh let's get to the gameplay right how does it play is it fun well i have to say that yeah this guy is a lot of fun i play mostly a set of courts and project cards too and those are supported directly from the uvr software and i have to say the experience is very very fun. Of course, uh, you really uh, kind of feel like you are in a car because you have all the movements that you're supposed to have. You feel the g-force when taking a turn and you can also feel the acceleration and the braking, of course. Also, one big thing on the UVR, it can spin 360 degrees and that's pretty nice because you can really understand when like your car is losing traction. So it's really recommended to have a pulley system or in the case like me, I put it in a corner, the software can be calibrated to have a it like a limited your movement and that's how I use it because I don't want to have this thing in the middle of the room every time but if you have the possibility to put it in the middle of the room well you have the best experience possible of course now there are a lot of calibration that you can do yourself on software I have to say that I prefer it out of the box uh, with GT cars because uh, with open wheel cars that are my favorite by the way it ends up vibrating too much but probably just the settings on the acceleration or and the speedometer uh, to make it less prone uh, to like shaking and things and <laughs> makes it very very hard to actually control these cars now I never uh, drove myself a real open wheel so I don't know if those vibrations are there but uh, doing go cars or going on track with the like, motorbikes and stuff you don't have those vibrations if your car or motorbike is not broken. And also this vibration after like an hour that you use it, like kind of unscrew all the supports on the steering wheel. Uh, so you find yourself having the steering wheel moving around, you have just to stop a second, re-screw everything and keep going. Now, it's not a deal breaker, but it can be a little annoying if you wanna stay in the simulator for long sessions, of course. And of course, where the UVR shines is with the Otis, uh, with like flying simulators, like DCS is supported, Elite Dangerous is supported, but if you have games that are not directly supported, you can still use it if the games have telemetry uh, with different software states. Unfortunately, you have to pay, but you get the lenses one and you can play pretty much everything. I still have to try Star Wars Squadrons that I think that it's gonna be amazing, but also in December is gonna arrive Microsoft Flight Simulator, the new one, so I can't really wait to try it in uh, this thing over here. So how is it? Should you consider it? Well, I have to say that I had a lot of fun with the UVR, but I have to say that it was a little stressful because I thought it was a pretty like, a, you know, set up and go and start. Instead, it took a little time and tickling to actually have the experience how I want it. Now, I'm a pretty picky person, so it took a little longer than usual to make it work like I want it. Uh, but if you are okay, if you're not that tall, uh, and if you're okay with experience, and no matter what, if you're in the right position for the cars that you wanna use, uh, well, 
of course, the setup is gonna be much, much faster than what mine was. And I have to say that luckily, as I said, there's a big community behind on Discord that really helps on everything. So if you're interested in this, for sure, go to the Discord for start to ask questions because those guys are amazing. So overall, should you consider? Well, that really depends on you. Really depends on the assets you're using, uh, how much you wanna work on it, how much uh, motion simulators is important for you. For personal experience, I have to say that I'm faster uh, driving around without a motion simulator because uh, when you know a truck and stuff, like not having like external forces makes stuff much, much much easier but instead if you want a bigger immersion well uh, this is for sure the way to go and there are very little accessories at this price it is around two thousand dollars to get to a motion simulator situation it's not the most comfortable it's not plug and play it's not the most racing thing ready but i think that it's really a good enough for all situation when you can have your driving simulators your uh, flying simulator all together you just sit in and you start to enjoy your games in vr of course am i happy with this well i think you can tell but uh, i had a stressful period to actually make it work like i want it now it works every time you just blew push like three or four buttons and I'm in and I can play like a Seto Corsa in the best way possible. But uh, yeah, if you are not a person that is willing to actually take this time uh, to drill around like a uh, hammer down stuff and, uh, and well, makes everything ready uh, like you want, well, probably this is not uh, the thing for you. Maybe uh, you're just ready to spend like uh, over double the price and have uh, motion simulators that are actually good out of the box. So personally, would I buy it? Well, now that I know uh, all the works they put on, probably I will think twice, uh, but at the end, yeah, I'm very much enjoying it and I'm glad to have it here. And I'm using it much more than what I was expecting. So yeah, here you have it guys. Uh, this is the Yo VR. I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, little review. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Are you interested in uh, uh, motion simulators? Did you find any motion simulators cheaper? Uh, than this and do you like this idea of a portable and compact simulator? Well, let me know in the comment below and as always if you like the video like if you didn't like the videos like Subscribe to the channel for more VR tech and if you really love the channel the join button down there a little down further Also the patreon that really supports over here prior access to videos and also we have t-shirts sticker and max 2020 item number one. So again like this like subscribe. I see you guys next video. Thanks for watching